Hey, welcome back to another Pragmatic Works YouTube video. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to insert tables or repeating items into Word templates with Power Automate. If you're interested in getting started with Power Automate and Word templates, make sure you take a look at Devin's video posted about a year ago that does an awesome job of explaining how to insert fields and then reference those fields in Power Automate. But today we are focusing just on the repeating section of a Word template and how to insert a table into that template. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so taking a look at the screen, let's look at our scenario today. We're gonna to go back to this asset tracking scenario that I keep going back to in a lot of my videos. It's just a very common use case and uh, I can build a lot of examples off, off of it. So uh, what we're doing here today is we wanna send out a word template to all of the employees that have assets in their position. And we want to just show them their assets with the due dates for each one. So, you know, maybe once a month or at the end of each year, we can send out an email with the template to all of our employees that says, Hey, here is the list of items, which you have here are their due dates. Please make sure you get them back to us in time. So to do that, I've just got the kind of very beginnings of a word template here. I've got a word document up. And I've just got, you know, some high insert employee name below are the assets still in your possession. Please return each asset by its assigned due date. So just taking a look at this very simple word document. Again, Devin's video does an awesome job of going into how to add fields to your word template, but I'll just show one here really quickly. Um, we've got the high insert employee name, right? That's not a repeating section. That's not a table. That's just going to be one dynamic field that we want to pass into this template. So if I want to turn this into a field, I can just highlight it and I can go up to the developers section. So right up at the top of your word document, you should see developer. If you are using a Mac or if you're even using a PC and you don't see this developer, uh, you can Google how to get that developer tab on the top ribbon here. It's very easy to do. It's just a setting that you have to turn on within your word application on your machine. So you would go to file and, and bring in the developer tab. So we're going to go to the developer and we want to bring in a plain text control with that text, you know, pre highlighted. Now it's going to be a field. You'll see that it's got this gray box around it with these little three dots right here on the left. And we're going to go to properties and we're going to rename this field so that it will show up nicely in power automate later on. And that's going to be the title section. So I'm just going to call this uh, full name. Now you'll see there's a little tag above this field. So then when we get to power automate, that'll be one of the dynamic fields that it asks for when we say we want to populate a word template. All right. But the most important thing, what we are here to do today is a repeating section. So we want to insert a table of all of the individual employees assets that are currently in their possession. So let's first insert a table to hold all of that information. So I'm going to go to insert, I'll bring in a table and we'll just bring in three columns for right now, just to kind of drive the point home. So I'm going to start with a three by two. That way I can have, I can, you know, kind of build out my header columns for this table. So I've got three columns here. And for this first row, I'll just start building out some headers. So maybe I'll center this text and I can say, uh, maybe the asset type. And over here, maybe I'll put the serial number. You know what? Let's put the manufacturer. That would make, that would probably be more meaningful to someone. So we've got asset type, manufacturer, and we'll also put in the due date. And because this is a table and these are headers, maybe I can just highlight this whole row give it a little background color, maybe make the text a little, a little larger, maybe bold it, right? Starting to look like a table. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to add some input fields into this word template for each row in the table. So I'm going to do that one by one. So for asset type, I'm just going to put in asset type. And you can do spaces. You could not do spaces. It's up to you, but now I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to go up to the developer section and I want to insert a plain text control for this asset type. 
Now I'll go to properties and I'll just rename it asset type. I'll do the same thing for manufacturer. So I'll just start with a little bit of text here. Make sure I spell that right. I will highlight that. I'll insert a plain text control, go to properties and call it manufacturer. And then lastly, we'll put in a field for the due date. I'll just say due, highlight it, put in a plain text control, go to properties and call this due. Now, if I was to go to Power Automate and say, I want to populate this word template, it's going to say, what's the asset type? What's the manufacturer? And what's the due date? However, that's only going to give me one row. If I have 10 items that are assigned to someone, how do I then take that and make this a repeating section? So now I've got one row with three fields. Now that I have that, I can highlight all three of these fields and go to insert in the developer section and we're going to put in a repeating section so it's this little icon right here if you hover over it it'll tell you repeating section so go ahead and with those three fields selected click that repeating section and now we have a repeating section with each of these three fields in it now we can rename this section if we want to i'm going to click on properties that's the asset type. I'm going to select the entire row. So if I want to rename this input, I can select the little three dots right next to the row, which is highlighting the entire row. And I can go to properties and I can call this asset items. Now, because this is a repeating section and this repeating section is called asset items, another word for a repeating section or a table is an array. So we need to pass an array in from Power Automate into the asset items. And now all we need to do is map our fields of our array to the fields that we have in this repeating section. So what I usually like to do is have notepad handy so I can just start kind of writing some of this down. So for our array, we have an asset type, a manufacturer, and a due date. And that's what I called all of those inputs. Remember, if you click on each one, you'll see the name of it. I named it asset items with no space. This one I named manufacturer, and this one I named do. So now I can just start creating my array in Notepad that'll make it much easier to, to do this in Power Automate next. So I'm just gonna, uh, with, with JSON arrays, you need double quotes for the, the name of the column in the array. So we have asset type, in quotes, and then I'll do a colon, and then the value that we want to assign to asset type. For right now, I'll just type dynamic content. And then I can do the same thing. So do a comma and hit enter. Next, I'll put in a field for the manufacturer. And then lastly, we have the date that it is due. So do dynamic content. Now with a JSON array, you also just need to put all of this between curly brackets. So there is the beginnings of my array. And we know that Microsoft Word with a repeating section is going to expect us to pass in an array to this repeating section. So knowing that, let's now go over to Power Automate and figure out how we're going to get these items. So I've already got a flow started and I've already got some lists supporting this as well with some data. So to show you what I'm doing, let's go to SharePoint and we've got two lists that we're gonna do for this flow. We've got asset holders. So these are basically people in the organization that might have assets. We've got Matt, Jonathan, and myself. And then we go to the asset manager list and we've got a bunch of different assets that are in use and assigned to those people from the other list. So the current owner field here is a person column and the asset holder table also has a person column. So what we're gonna do in our flow is we're gonna first get all of the asset holders. So all of the people that could have assets and then we're gonna get items in the asset manager table. So the first thing we need to do is we need to filter this asset manager table by the asset holder that was retrieved in the step above. So I'm gonna to go to advanced 
options here, and I'm going to do a filter statement. So for this, we have a column in this table in the asset manager called current owner. So if I go back to my flow, I'll say current owner, and let's just make sure we have the right field name there. So to get your logical name for your field, right now I need to find the logical name for this current owner field. So if you go to list settings and then go down to the field that we want to get the logical name for and click that field, then up in the URL, it will tell you at the very end field equals current owner. So that's my logical name. It actually has a capital O in it. So I'm going to go back down to my power automate flow here and I want to say current owner. And if we want to look at specifically, because that's a person column, if we want to do an OData filter query on a person column, we can do slash and then one of the fields within that person table, essentially. So we can say current owner slash email. For some reason, it requires a capital E and a capital M. So we can say the current owner's email is equal to, and then in single quotes, I'll put the employee email from the step above. So that's going to automatically go into an apply to each. So for each asset holder, it's going to filter the list of assets by that person. Put my single quote at the end of my filter query there. And now for each person, so just to think through this, if I go back to my SharePoint list and we'll go back to asset holders. So for Matt Peterson, it's going to go into the asset manager list and it's going to grab all of the assets in here that currently have Matt Peterson listed as the current owner. So it should get the smartphone, the printer and the laptop. Next thing we need to do is for each of these items that it finds. So for each of those three assets that it finds, we need it to actually add that to an array. And we don't have a variable stood up for that just yet. So let's go ahead and initialize an array variable that we're then going to use to pass into our word template. So whenever you initialize a variable, it has to be done at the top level of a flow, meaning it cannot be done inside of a loop. So before the apply to each loop, let's go ahead and add an action to initialize a variable. And we'll call this VAR items, the type is going to be an array and we can have an initial value of nothing. Now we're going to go in and get all of the items. And for each item that we find, we want to append that item to this array variable. So let's add an action and search for append. And we want to append to an array variable. We want to append to our var items array. Or the value in which we want to append is our, we already have our schema for that array in the notepad over here. So I'm just going to copy that in, paste it over here. And now I can start kind of swapping out my dynamic content. So the asset type, I can get rid of dynamic content, go to my actual dynamic content and search for asset type. We want the asset type value that will go into an inner apply to each loop. So for each person, go and get all the items. And then for each item for that person, add that to this array variable. Now I'll just put in the rest of my dynamic content here. So the manufacturer will be the manufacturer value from that list. And the due date will be the due date from my dynamic content. Make sure I still have my commas after each one and perfect. Now, before we go further, one thing to know is that because we're in an apply to each loop and then we're in an inner apply to each loop. So for every person, go and get all of their items. For every item, append that to an array variable. So once we go through all of the loops for all of the people, it's going to keep adding items to this array variable for each person. But that's not what we want to do. Before we start appending to that variable, we actually want to kind of reset our variable back to blank so that it's not showing, you know, the last person's items with everyone else's items included. 
So before we go to this inner apply to each loop, let's also add an action to basically reset our array variable back to blank. So we want to set our variable and we want to set that var items array to basically just a blank table. So the way we can do that is just with an open square bracket and a closed square bracket. Perfect. And I can get rid of this warning here. It's because I don't have a filter on the asset holders. Now, just to get that error to go away, one thing I can do is I can just add a filter here. You don't have to do this, but I'm just going to say ID is less than four because I only have three people in there. That way I don't have to keep dealing with this error over and over and over again. Now I'm just going to save and test this just to make sure I got my syntax right for everything. And perfect, it ran successfully. So let's go into this apply to each and see what our variable is getting set to. So for each item, we've got one of three, which means we found three people. In this inner loop, we found one of three, which means we found three items for this first person. So we've got the laptop, Contoso, due 2023, 1130. Go to the next one. So it looks like we're putting in all of our values correctly here. We've got the asset type, the manufacturer, and the due date into this perfect array that is going to be accepted by our Word document because we have the same fields here. So knowing that we got our syntax right for everything, all we need to do now is populate that Word template, right? So for where do we want to do this? Um, if I add a new step below the apply to each, then it's just going to create one Word document. But we want to create one document for each of our asset holders so I want to do this inside of this main apply to each, but not inside of the inner apply to each where we're getting all of that person's items. So in the main apply to each, I'm going to add an action. And uh, first, I don't think I saved my Word document. So let's go back here and I'm going to go and save this. And I'll just save it to documents and I'll call this asset manager template. There we go. Now that I've got that saved to OneDrive, let's go and search for Word in our connectors. And we want to populate a Microsoft Word template. Now we'll just point to where that file is. and it's in my documents folder. And if I scroll down, there's my asset manager template. Now, as soon as you click that, it's gonna read that template and say, okay, in this template, here are the different fields that you need to pass in. We have the one for the employee's full name. So I'm gonna go and search for, this is in the applied each for the asset holders. So I'm gonna search for my field called employee and we'll put in their display name. Now you'll see the fields from our repeating section. We have the asset type, the manufacturer, and the due date. Now, if we knew exactly how many items we had, then we wouldn't have had to build that array variable. We could just populate that with dynamic content, click add a new item, or we can switch to the array view for this. And anytime in Power Automate, anytime you see this little icon right here, this is how you can switch to the array view or like the advanced view. Rather than populating each field of an array, we can click this and we can put in our own array. And because we have our array variable with the exact same fields, all we have to do is pass in var items and we are done. So let's go ahead and save and we'll do one more thing. Now let's email that person with their own unique Word template of all of the assets that they currently have. So let's add an action and let's send them an email with their file. Now for this, I'm gonna, of course, send this email to myself rather than annoying Matt and Jonathan on a Sunday. So the subject here will be here are your assets currently. And for the body, we can just say C attached. 
And if we go to advanced options, we can then insert an attachment. So for this, we'll give it a name and I'll call this maybe, we'll do employee display name underscore assets and we have to give it a file extension so that it knows what type of file to insert so we have to do docx now the attachments content will be the outputs from our step above where we're populating the word template now let's save this and let's give it a test. Let's make sure hopefully our array is recognized by that word template and it just fills out that table for us. And our flow ran successfully. So I'm going to check my inbox. And there we got one email for Matt Peterson. There's Nate Hallowell's assets. And then finally, there's Jonathan Silva's assets. So we got three separate emails. Let's make sure that the files look correct. Let's open up Nate Hallowell's assets. There we go. Hi, Nate Hallowell. Below are the assets still in your possession. Nate has a tablet from Trey Research and it's due 1231. He also has an accessory from Contoso that's due in 2024. So Nate worked. Let's go and check Matt's. We remember Matt had three items. Matt has a laptop from Contoso. Perfect. So we've got all three items in this repeating section. So if there's a couple tips that I can give you, it's that make sure as you're naming your items in each row of the table, give it a name and then immediately have notepad ready and start building that array with the exact same names that you make the fields in the word template. The other tip that I would have for you is don't forget to, in your flow, make sure that when you're in the apply to each loop, before you start appending items to that array, make sure you set the array to blank with the open square bracket and closed square bracket. Hopefully this is helpful. Repeating sections are very easy to do in Word templates as long as you make your array something easy and you kind of build out that array as you go. So good luck. Hopefully this helps and we'll see you in the next video.